everyone welcome back to my channel I am today working on my uh, most recent uh, design team project for Nelly and Clem and I thought let's just stick the camera on <laughs> uh, yeah I just thought that I would film a little bit of what I'm about to do so uh, I'm making this uh, Halloween TN using the most recent spooky Halloween kit from Nelly and Clem you can get this on Etsy and the really good thing about this kit is um, there's PNG files, so you can rescale all sorts of the images and the journaling cards and things like that. There's some pumpkins that I could resize, you see. So I'm at the point where I'm decorating the cover. Uh, I've got this is the front, and then this will be the back. Uh, the papers are from uh, the spooky Halloween kit apart from this black and white stripy one that's from the up Shits Creek kit but it goes so well with all well any kind of crafting but especially Halloween because of the black and white uh, the cobweb the spider web um, that was just from like, Cricut design store design what was it called design whatever it's called that's just a Cricut thing and the alphas aren't part of the kit either but I've been trying to think of how I can um, embellish this further and I thought I would use some of that shrinky dink plastic that I've just got and um, resize some of the spider um, die cuts from the kit but make them into like shrinky dink charms so that they could be scattered on the front and I'll stitch them on so they kind of move around a little bit so this morning wasn't planning on doing a video <laughs> so this morning I've resized some of the imagery from uh, the Nellie and Clem spooky Halloween kit and I have printed it out as far as I've got onto a sheet of this shrinky dink plastic this is supposedly cl classed as the clear one I have the other ones here so it comes in a pack um, the ones I got from Amazon and there are some white and some clear so let me just show you the difference so it was Emma from Project Sparkle that got me onto this. I'd noticed a few people making charms out of this stuff. But having that happy mail from Emma and actually getting to physically see the um, shrinky dink charms, I was like, I, I, need to, I need to make some. So I have already made some for something else that I'm making. But I thought this would be perfect for um, Nelly and Clem's digital kit. So yes. This is the white one, so when you make the charms, you'll have your image on one side and it will be white on the reverse. Whereas Emma from Project Sparkle told me if you use the clear one, you will see the image, you see, on both sides of the charms. So that is what I'm going to do. I haven't tried this clear one out yet, so that will be interesting. So yeah, all you have to do is um, get your what you want turned into charms. Um, on your computer lay it out how you want and you stick the sheet in so you're printing on the frosty side you can tell that that is rough and you can see it as well can't you look that's all glossy and shiny and this is more matte and kind of frosted so yes I've just printed them out so now I'm going to fussy cut them and then we're gonna shrink right so I've Fussy cut everything out. The images, as you can see, are quite large, but the um, when you have cooked them, <laughs> they shrink down to 20% of the size. Is that right? Let's have a look here. The sheet shrinks to 20% of its original size. So I didn't want them to be t absolutely tiny. Obviously, if you want real uh, tiny, intricate ones, then, of course, make your original image that much smaller I don't normally um, die cut things quite so large but because I've already given it a go um, with a different uh, kit some of the um, charms ended up being uber tiny so I thought I'll go bigger this time go big or go home so punching holes now so you obviously punch a hole where you want uh, your hole to be should we have it on this if it was hanging I think we'll do it about here ghosty 
that was quite difficult to fussy cut because I could barely see um, where it was. I might go for a smaller hole because his eyes are in the way. We'll do it on a jaunty angle. And then I've got the Beetlejuice sign. Why should we have that? Because of its shape. I think we might have it there. Let's go for a larger one. Oh, that flew in my mouth. <laughs> ah, well, that's a first. That's never happened before. Right, so the, sp the spiders are all going to go on the front. <laughs> I can't believe that went in my mouth. How funny. Right, so this one definitely needs a teensy hole. Right in the middle of his forehead. Keeping my mouth firmly closed from now on when I'm using the... <laughs> it's because it's quite tough, I think, and it sort of flies out at you. Oh, dear. Do I want them all... Or should I have them... I might do them all... To... Yes, I know what I'm talking about. This is what happens when I'm not planning on filming. I just talk utter nonsense. Uh... Um, yeah, we'll stick with the smaller hole. Why not? Try it out. So, we are all punched. Uh, I also believe it says on here that you cook them in the oven, like preheat the oven, put them on parchment paper. But I'd seen that Emma was just using a heat gun, so that's what I did when I gave it a go recently. She used a heat gun and she used a pair of um, pliers just to hold it in place because it will all curl up, as you will see in a second. So, haven't you got these little ones? Otherwise, I'd have to use, like, a kitchen fork or something like that. So, here we go. I'm going to hold it down, and you'll see it all curl up, and then it will go back into flat. Uh, word of warning, I have asbestos fingers. I always touch really hot things. Um, you're not supposed to touch this when you when it's heated up because it will be extremely hot but I, I was kind of pressing it down like that but I do have very tough fingers so part of this will be do as I say not as I do <laughs> but anyway let's give it a go So this is when you're not supposed to touch it, <laughs> but I just tend to kind of tap it, tap it down a bit. Like you're not supposed to do this, but it dries like rock solid really quickly and it kind of warps. So to me, that's just a little bit wonky. You see? It's a bit kind of warped. So I'm going to put the heat gun back on it and just see if I can flatten that out a bit. I don't know if it's going to work. I think that is it now. Once it's shrunk into a position, that is it. But look, they are proper solid. It's like a piece of plastic. So I've got a witch's brew. Let me see with the size of my... TN, how big that would be hanging off. It's quite large, really, isn't it? It was hanging off the side. So maybe I need to print them again um, and kind of do them in between a medium size. These might be a little bit too big, but we will we'll see. We'll persevere with it. Let's try the 31 now. Give this one a go. Whew. <laughs> Squish. So maybe if you've got uh, those, what are they called? Those silicon things that people use to protect their fingers. 
maybe that would work better than putting your bare fingers on really hot plastic. But like I said, I seem to have asbestos fingers. I mean, don't get me wrong, I can feel it's very hot, but I just don't leave my finger on it. It's got a bit of a line on it. But I think it had that on the sheet already. So there we have a 31. Let's try these spiders. I've got a feeling these are going to be a bit too big, but we'll see. A bit worried about these legs. A bit spindly. Whee! <laughs> oh my. It looks like an octopus. Stop, there we go. Oh. Oh. Flatten. not going to go any smaller. Get your leg down, mister. Turn it over. Oh. Oh. She hot. Probably get stuck to this tray now. At least it looks a bit flatter. That was quite tricky. The legs just kept sticking to one another. Hot, hot. <clears throat> it's going well. Ugh, there we go. So he was the smallest one, wasn't he? Let's see how big that would look. Uh, I think they'll be okay. Let's try the biggest. And then I'll show you what I'm up to next. Let's just try this biggest one. I won't do every single one here. We'll be here forever. <laughs> oh, I love him. He's so cute. Just try and dislodge him off this tray. So maybe if you have a silicon ah. surface to do that on, that would work better. Because obviously this metal conducts heat. So this is getting hot and then the plastic is getting hot. The tweezers are getting hot. <laughs> The one gone. Where's he gone? Oh, oh, I love it. Oh, come on. Let's do the last spider. Let's just do it. Oh, hang on. Is this the right way around? <clears throat> Wee! Oh, 
Oh my God. Love him. So, here's my three spiders for the front. Uh, I will shrinky dink those other bits off camera and then I'll get back to you. I went back over the Witch's Brew and the 31 uh, with the heat gun again and flattened it out a bit more. So I'm a bit happier with how those have come out now. I've got the Beetlejuice and I've done the Ghost. So let's just have a look at how these spiders would perhaps go. I don't know whether to do smaller to larger, larger to smaller. Oh my God, how cute! So I am so pleased with that. I don't think I'm going to do any more. I wasn't sure if three would be enough because I wasn't sure quite how small they were going to go. But I think th you know, odd numbers always work better, don't they? And then I might hand um, machine stitch some sequins on and then do the closure and stitch down this um, the thickers because they often ping off, don't they? So I will be back once I have done my cover and I'll show you. So I worked out where the spiders were going to go and then around them I have sewn um, some sequins on. I may add some more but they may just be glued on. I'm not quite sure yet and I've stitched down uh, the October and then my spiders will be attached like so. And then on the back, I've just added um, my thing. <laughs> and I have just gl uh, temporarily glued on uh, what will be the fabric closure on this, on the cover. So now I'm going to go and stitch uh, this panel onto the front and do the same on the back. And um, hand stitch the spiders on last because... Everything is sewn on now. That's what it looks like opened up. So you can see this uh, cobwebby panel on the front is sewn on, as is the back. Just looks like that inside at the moment. Uh, these won't be kept this long, but I always sort of tear the fabric and leave it as long as possible. Get everything assembled in the album, tie in a bow, and then I cut the excess off. So it's like excessively long at the moment. The next stage will be my little shrinky dinks working out where they're going to go. This is going to go on the inside panel. It's like this funny little, uh, this was an envelope that I readjusted and covered with um, papers from the um, spooky Halloween kit. I got this idea from Amity Bloom. Uh, but obviously it's a Halloween version. And this kind of funny little envelope pocket thing is going to get glued on on the inside. So I want to make sure that when I sew and attach these spiders, they are all hidden um, behind that. So I think they are going to go about there quite sure yeah I think I'll put them about there so I'm just going to make a little mark where the hole is so that um I know where to sew the bottom <laughs> and I'm laying this next to it just to make sure that they would cover on the opposite side so let's just make a hole or make a mark where it's going to be one two and three. So I am gonna get some needle and thread and sew these on. I have attached uh, the first two. See them wiggly woggly? So I thought I would do this uh, last one on camera. I have my coffee in my cauldron cup. I don't tip it so you can see it's cauldron feet. <laughs> but it is. Mm my pound shop bargain right so to make the owls we've gone very high tech here using like a darning needle i do have a pokey tool upstairs that the lovely carmen made for me but that is upstairs and i'm still working away on the coffee table because i've trashed the house anywho 
here um, is the little mark I made earlier. So all I've been doing is without harpooning your fingers on the other side, kind of wiggling the darning needle until it makes a bit of a hole. And then doing it, well, about half a centimetre away from that hole. I think I'm going to go on this angle, like a bit of a jaunty angle. So about that far away from the original hole, make another one. It was a bit bigger. That happened on, well, both of them actually, the second hole. I just get a bit carried away. Not that it matters. Right, so I've got... A thinner needle here with just black um, normal sewing thread for my machine so I go up through the first hole I made thread my spider on and then go back through the second hole so there he is he's attached now and then I flip it over and tie it in a knot. You know, it's very simple. Very, very simple. I've left the threads, um, as you can see, quite long. Um, it's going to be tricky with the needle on it. Let's, cut, hang on, let's just cut this needle off. I don't need it now. Now the thread has got shorter. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, I keep the threads kind of long and I always put glue and, and hold them down. If I'm sewing something, whether it's machine sewing or hand sewing, if I know no one's going to see the back, then that is what I do. I always glue down what I've been working on, glue down those loose threads and any knots just so that I feel confident that it's not going to go anywhere. <laughs> so that's why I've left them loose. So I've... Uh, on all of them, I'm doing about maybe three or four ties like that. And trim it off. Uh, funnily enough, I've been chatting to Beck on Instagram today. Beck is the pink papery and she was asking me about what glue I use for making shakers and whatnot. And I was telling her this beacon three in one glue <laughs> is literally my go to glue for everything. Uh, that and a glue gun. I, I, I very rarely use any other kind of glue so I'm just kind of dabbing it on the loose threads and then I shall smear it down it's very high tech around here <laughs> smear it down because it's got to get covered up hasn't it with that bunny envelope so and then I'll cut off um, the excess shortly. So there it is. There's my spiders. And of course they move around just a wee bit. So there we are. So I've just gone and grabbed all the inserts. I mean, nothing is sewn in yet. I haven't like bound it and this trim, the closure hasn't been trimmed off. <laughs> I just wanted to see kind of what it would all look like and I still think it needs a little something extra because I don't do things by halves I'm just more is more kind of a girl um I'm not going to be able to machine stitch any more sequins on but I might just embellish it um down the line with some more sequins or jemmies and things like that like dot them around on the cobweb but this is it so far. I just wanted to show you, uh, you know, the making of the Shrinky Dinks and using them not just as charms, you know, using them as um, a form of embellishment. So I will be back on the 4th of October, which is actually my birthday, uh, with my new um, project share for my design team project for Nellie and Clem, which will be this finished article. So I hope you will join me on the 4th of October when this will all be finished and I will do a proper flip through. But thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Bye.